Welcome back to another RSMF video. In this video, we're going to talk about practical tips in generating RSMF files. Now, when I created this uh, message crawler, my conversion application, I never actually performed the conversion or used the, re the output of it. I simply matched the specs described on the website. So when people tried to use the application, they were like, okay, well, I see that it's working, but I'm not sure if this if everything makes sense or how do I break things up so it does make more sense when we're reviewing and producing and so on. Uh, now that I started actually using my application for my use to process data through it, I start seeing some of the shortcomings of it and also I can better answer people's questions as to what is the best way of using the application itself. So without any more talking, let's just jump onto my screen and uh, I'll show you a few tips and tricks. All right, so I have a dat file loaded into message crawler. And first thing people tend to do is they just wanna say, generate an export, but no, you need to take a little bit of time and check all your fields and configure them. And one of the fields that uh, really gets people is this conversation identifier. So when you go in to generate RSMF files, you'll get multiple messages per file or per conversation. So you have to specify what field is going to be designated as a conversation. And sometimes you do have like a channel name or a conversation uh, in Slack, which has people's names with a dash, uh, but sometimes you don't have that. So one option that I've given message crawler is to use a date stamp field or timestamp field. So we have a timestamp field, which we can select right here from the dropdown timestamp. And that will create a new file anytime uh, that field changes, right? Whenever the value changes, a new file is going to start. Now you could see that this timestamp contains seconds, so that's gonna be no good. And that's why you have this format mask here. So this is where we can specify to format that field to year, year, month, month, day, day, and then use that whenever it changes to create a new file. So in this situation, every time a day changes, a new file will be created. So if I type, I'm gonna put this into export folder, generate export. And if I look what's in there, we have two files. The reason why we have two files is the time spans over two days, 920th and 919th. So this works uh, exactly how you would expect. Two different days uh, becomes two conversations, which makes it easier and makes sense to review. Let's do a different example. I'm going to open, open Google Hangouts and I'm going to import this from my Google Hangouts. So now it's going to say we have conversations loaded. I'm not going to download attachments because we don't need it. I'm going to click load to grid, but after I load to grid, I'm going to resize some of the columns so you can see some of the names because uh, I don't have permissions from people's name, people's permissions to actually show you their names. I don't know if they're gonna be upset. So I'm just gonna resize it so they're small, nothing confidential, but just in case, hang on. All right, columns are hidden. So this is our participants. This is from and the actual content of the message. And we have a few things going on here. So we still have our uh, attachments where that would be indicated by the attachment URL, even though we don't have the actual path. Uh, but the question here again is how do we slice this up? And so the first thing you, you can do is just use this conversation. So you just select conversation here, and now you're going to get one RSMF file per conversation. However, this conversation is pretty sizable. Well, this one is not too bad, but some can go on for a while. So what you, what some people want to do is break it up by conversation and a day. So let me show you how to do that. We're gonna use a date format to format our timestamp, but just like we did before, we're going to apply a mask to it to only be by day, you'll see. So format day, and I will say, give me my timestamp, format it to short date. And also I'm going to say whenever message type, which is right here, is an attachment, we're going to carry over that timestamp down like a sort date, this way you don't have attachments separating from everything else. So we're going to format it to a short date. And now that we have a short date, well, we 
could use this as a um, conversation identifier, but now we disregarding the conversation itself here. So again, it's another way of doing it. You could just group it by day, regardless of which conversation that was in, but we can do it another way. We can combine conversation and generated date and create a new conversation identifier and then use that. So we're going to click on generate conversations and now we'll select our generated date and conversation. And we're of course going to do our message type attachment so it, that the attachments work properly. And what we'll do now is generate a hash value based on these two fields and save it to a new field called generated conversation, which is right here on the right. And now we can use this field to generate our RSMF files. And now you're going to have a grouping by conversation and by day. And again, you can change the formatting of generated date to be by month if you'd like, whichever way you want to do it. What you have to consider is how you're going to be producing these documents, right? Let's say you create nice long conversation that's easy to read, but then attorney reviews this and says, okay, I want to produce just these uh, 50 messages. Well, what are you gonna do with the rest of them? So attorney is gonna have to go in and redact all other pages and they're not gonna like doing that. So this is where you have to find this balance between having a long, meaningful conversation and small enough documents that you're going to use in the production. So those are my sort of practical tips as to how you were to group uh, file, uh, messages in RSMF file format for them to make the most sense, I guess. And this is version 2.0, by the way, which will be available soon. Uh, if uh, you've been emailing me and we've been talking about something, you're probably already using that. And if you just download it from the website, you on 1.0, and this is coming soon. This is in beta right now. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's how you break up your text messages into conversations.